Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, October 18th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick diary today about phishing and spam via SMS, sometimes called smishing, and how the landscape may be changing a little bit here. The entire problem with automated, unsolicited SMS messages has become a pretty big deal, and with that, lots of complaints uh, to the FCC and to carriers. So now there are some new regulations that I think I may have talked already about in the past, but good reminder as some of this is starting to get into effect now that try to restrict some of the malicious use of sms what this results in is that carriers will do more blocking and filtering of sms messages in particular if they are originating from numbers that are not supposed to send sms messages Earlier this year, the FCC released a directive uh, stating that carriers must now keep databases of phone numbers that will never send an SMS message, like, for example, you know, good old-fashioned landlines, some uh, government uh, numbers are mentioned here, for example, and they must block any SMS messages that appear to come from these numbers. And also some carriers in particular, T-Mobile has been kind of vocal about this, are starting to basically use sort of their own algorithms to block some SMS messages that they consider spam. Now, one sort of characteristic that's being used here to identify spam is that uh, some numbers will only send SMS messages and never receive them. I think this may be behind a recent trend where you do get these SMS phishing emails and then they ask you to reply first. Now, also got a comment to the diary where one reader states that replying to an SMS message may actually activate uh, links in the SMS message on some systems and then also sort of make it less likely that uh, future messages are sort of automatically being filtered by the device. So this may affect filtering by the carrier as well as by the device. The bad side of all of this is that this will certainly affect if you are sending, for example, two-factor authentication tokens via SMS. Yes, has been lots of talk about whether it's a good idea or not, uh, but uh, this may be another reason why you probably should reconsider using SMS for a second factor unless you set up a special agreement with whatever service you're using for SMS to allow you to send these messages. Well, I'm interested in hearing how other countries sort of deal with this problem. This is very US-centric, what I mentioned uh, so far. So if you're willing to share, uh, let me know uh, what your experience is with sort of various uh, filtering techniques uh, by carriers for SMS. And in Germany, a scam is showing up in Berlin that I have heard about in San Francisco, but really not uh, too much otherwise. And that's a fake traffic tickets with QR code. So you'll get back to your car, you'll see something that vaguely looks like a traffic ticket. And I have to say, they don't really look all that uh, accurate. But of course, if you don't receive a lot of traffic tickets, you may not necessarily know what they're supposed to look like. And a QR code offers a simple option to pay for the traffic ticket. Of course, the QR code will then lead to a malicious website that will steal your personal information and probably also charge an arbitrary amount to your credit card. The exact uh, variations of this scam uh, vary, but uh, that's sort of the overall scheme here. So be aware if you are seeing anything like that. Well, uh, send me a copy if you are getting a ticket uh, like this. Not going to pay it for you, uh, but it would be interesting uh, to see what attackers are doing with fake traffic tickets like this. And Synology fixed an interesting vulnerability in its uh, network accessible storage uh, devices. Uh, This is related to using an insecure uh, random function. Actually, the vulnerability hasn't 
its origin in something that's actually not a bad idea from a security point of view. And that's when you are installing the device, you're going through a setup wizard, and you must, during the setup procedure, create a new administrator account. The actual admin account is then being disabled. And there is some JavaScript in the browser as you're going through this browser-based uh, interface to create a random password for this new administrative user. The problem here is that they're using the JavaScript math random function, which, well, isn't exactly random. It's a not a super important vulnerability in so far that it's still relatively random. So uh, still not that terribly easy to get, for example, the seed that was being used here uh, for uh, creating uh, these passwords, but still something that should be fixed and Synology did fix here. And I have to say, I rather see us talk more about uh, using the wrong random number generator in devices like this versus hard-coded passwords and SSH keys as we usually deal with in these devices. Unlike, for example, mile site routers, uh, these routers suffer from an information disclosure vulnerability that does allow an unauthenticated attacker to retrieve things like uh, badly encrypted credentials that can then easily be recovered or an attacker can even, without authentication, again, change VPN configurations and firewall rules. Well, this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.